so I am back for another Arteza review um, using their products in a technique that I have been working in for a little while. I did a lot of this during the summer when I was in France using some of the Wood um, Aquarelle, the pastels that are generic to um, to that region. And many of you have heard me talk about that when you follow me on Patreon. And some of you who live in Europe know about those colors. And also I've been working with, I've worked for a while with the, um, the Karataki colors as well because they have some of the best golds and you guys know how much I like gold and uh, metallics. And so um, I've been working with Arteza and I really do enjoy their products. I have used up so much of the products they've already sent me. Um, it's like unbelievable how much I feel they work so well on the jelly plate. Their acrylics are like perfect for jelly printing. Out of so many of the other paints that I've used, the acrylics are perfect for jelly printing and the price point is really, really good to go along with it. Um, there's other paints you guys who follow me know that I love. Um, but I tell you, the Arteza's acrylics are like my go-to um, paints when I'm jelly printing along with my gold. Um, but mostly only the Golden's Point Aquadone Ozo Gold and the Iridescent Bronze. Um, kind of, those are my main two. The others are like, uh, for the money, it's like, okay. Um, love them though, but you know. Also being practical in terms of cost. So, um, I wanted to, when they, when Arteza reached out to me again and say, hey, you know, pick whatever you want. Um, if you want to do another review, I really wanted to jump at the opportunity for these watercolors because I do use the watercolors on my jelly plate and I have been using my book structures. So here again, you know, an incredibly deep palette of colors, lots of colors. This box is 60 watercolors. It's somewhere around maybe 30 something. Not, not here again, not expensive, but a lot of colors in the box. And my favorite thing, and I took this with me when I went to Mexico, those who follow, who follow me, know that I recently went to Mexico and I, I, I really I, I am a traveling artist I love to travel and do my art so any kind of case or that I can have that will allow me to to, um, to do that so when I was on their site and I saw wow they have these travel cases I'm like oh this is really good stuff so like all of the brushes are in here and you guys know how much I do. I love using my brush pens for my um, intuitive scripting. So to be able to use all the different colors in the various books and journals, my tattered temples that I've been creating, um, this is like unbelievable. And then there's slots in the back so you can add um, other any other pens you're using. Um, like I always carry this, where is it? My, um, my Cueco, so that can go down in here. Um, any other paint brushes, like my Sumi paint brushes that I like to use for watercolor. Okay, where is it? It's perfect for watercolor. So this will go down in there. Um, so I can carry my other, let's see if I can get this so you guys can see it. I can carry my other products, you know, paint brushes and pens with me. So it really does give it a lot of flexibility and then these do come out so if you're working and you just want to spread your um, um, you know work out you can open them up and you can take this out what I liked about the fact that it came out I also travel with my um, my mod you guys have seen these but this and this one is only packed with a lot of my other supplies and zipper places for me to carry all of my extra stuff that I'm working on journaling so what I liked about this is that this would fit when I take that piece out I can literally take the brushes that I want to take with me and then I can actually put my mod in here and I can actually have one travel bag that I can carry like this but it also has a strap on it so I really love that idea of it that I can actually just travel these panels are open but you know when you close the panels everything is in there nice and tight and it just gives me one go-to bag that I can take a lot of supplies with me so I liked that 
aspect of this little travel bag as well. And it also has a zipper um, place in the back so that you can put a journal down in there, you know, do whatever. So love, love, love this. So we're going to be working with these. And um, the series I've been working a lot on are using, these are handmade papers that I got in France. I coffee and tea stained them um, over the summer. This was one of my summer projects dealing with um, my womb project and um, conception vessels. So this is using all watercolor. Um, and so I wanted to show you, I was playing around with the Arteza and this is also larger sheets of the same thing front and back and I'm working on books. This is a, these are going to be book structures or they are book structures. I'm just working them all through. So I wanted to show you these are projects I've been working on since the summer. <clears throat> and so what I did is I got the Arteza mixed media pad. I also got the watercolor pad as well. And this is beautiful paper. I'm going to be using this <clears throat> and I'll, sh you know, you guys, I'll show you how I'll be using this, but it's an individual, so they're not glued together on the edges, which I like that. Sometimes those pads glued together on the edges. I understand why they're done like that, but I'm always slicing or doing something wrong. Though, for years I know how to open them, but you know, that doesn't seem to mean anything. And this is 100% cotton, 140 pound weight, and it is really beautiful paper. And it really has a very similar hand to the handmade paper, which is 100% cotton that I just showed you that I got when I was in France. So I thought, how cool would it be for us to play with way less expensive, because the handmade paper was like, $15 a sheet or something like that. It's a pretty decent sized sheet, but I bought maybe four or five or six of them for my project. So where this whole book I think is, comes in a two pack and $20 or something like that. Okay, so I'll show you what I've done so far. And then we'll, we'll play with the, with the product. So this is a sheet straight out of the book. Oh, I'm sorry, it gets fuzzy when it doesn't have anything to focus on. These are the exact same pages as this, but I've coffee and tea stained them um, and started moving a little bit of color um, onto it while I was playing with them. So basically what I was doing is getting something close to what I just showed you. Where the two of So, you know, by example, this is the $12 a, um, or $15, I don't know, it was in euros, it was like 15 euros, so let's just say that. A sheet, handmade paper, at this really interesting paper mill in south of France that makes all their paper, paper there, and it's beautiful, lovely paper. But look how I took the mixed media paper from Arteza, which has um, a good hand to it and has some cotton in it, and I've been able, like, putting these papers together, it's hard to tell the difference with the technique. It really has come out beautifully and I'm just starting on it. So this is the base layer where I've just coffee and tea stained them and then just taken a little bit of blue, um, like using a slate blue, you can use a um, denim blue, I use some of that um, from the pens, which are what we're gonna work with, and just kind of started getting this sort of background to it. So that's easy enough to do. Um, for you guys who want to do this technique. So start with that, start with some mixed media paper, and then we're going to build up from there. So let's take, just take a sheet to work on. Let's work on this sheet here. And I'll be working a lot with these, this watercolor, because I'm doing a lot with the watercolors, but, um, Suppose to kind of just doing a color test. I thought I would just do a technique versus, you know, like testing all the colors. Okay, which I can do it another time because um, we'll just kind of play with them as we go. So I have my watercolor palette over here and we're gonna start off by, let's just start off by doing some jelly printing. Let me get my small plate that, um, all we always start off with dirty plate this is but this actually has watercolor on it so no problem and I'm gonna first start off by stamping 
on the plate a bit. And the way I, and I think someone asked me this last week um, about how do I keep the paint from rolling up when you use the inks. And yes, they will roll up when you use the ink. So you just have to put a very, it's called my glazing technique. So you just have to glaze the plate with a very, very little bit of acrylic. I like using the, the Martha Stewart Champagne Gold or the Folk Art Champagne Gold. Either one. It makes a nice, thin layer. And then what we're going to do, while I'm waiting for that, I'm just going to put some water in the middle of my palette here. Because we're going to use... While I'm waiting for that to dry, we're going to use, I'm going to put black in here, which is noir. Um, I'm going to use the stone blue. Um, I want to try this gray. It's like a French blue. That's pretty. And this violet tulip, some of the names I just find so intriguing. I want to just kind of play with them because of the, the names. <clears throat> and toffee. Thought it was like a taupey brown to this palette. And then indigo. Indigo. Okay. So here we have some colors laid out. And let's start with... I'm going to get one of my, I can actually use my Sumi brush that I just put in the, the case here. Um, it's one of my favorite brushes. It's a handmade brush that I had done a number of years ago. I've had this brush oh, at least 18 years, I'm sure. And so we'll be using this. But, um... So to start, we already have a glaze layer down on the plate. So let's take, this color is denim blue. I love this color. And I'm gonna start by just kind of um, building up on the plate. And I just kind of put a little bit of water down as well. And then just kind of flip it over and stamp. So I kind of do a combination of stamped, you know, images, um, look at that. See how you just get this really very etheric quality to the line? Love it. So let's do a few of those. And uh, should still be enough. Really, yeah, it's still enough acrylic down here. Paint is sort of allowing me just to go in and. So I'm using the brushes here. Basically what I do is I just kind of start stamping the plate up. And also I have this wine red. I'm just gonna put a little bit of red on here as well. And I just kind of touch the brush just to kind of get a little bit of water moving because you don't need to put water on these brushes. They work beautifully without it. But for the jelly plate, I just want to get a little bit of water going down so that, um, oh, look at that. That wine red is nice. And it's mixed in with that blue a bit. So, oh, love it. So let's get a small circle here. Then I'm gonna go right, we're going to work right on the paper. Get up in this corner. I really love using watercolors on the on the plate. Just remember to put that little layer of um, acrylic down, and that's what helps to keep it from beating up. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go right to using um, some of these colors. So here, I'm just going to... And... Um, Let's start with this this one the stone. These, these colors are gorgeous. Let's 
that's so smooth too. Wow, look at that. You know how watercolor is once it bleeds into the paper. Ooh, I'm loving this. Um, when it bleeds into the paper, I use some indigo. And uh, I'll put that down as well. I'll take my water down first, start getting a little too excited, but that's okay. So, um, that color is really extending, isn't that good? I'm going to get a little bit of this lilac. I just want to see if I blend a little bit of that in. What happens? I just pick a color palette that's going to be close enough so that um wow that's gorgeous so we could try a range of colors that weren't all the same but um let's go for this tote Um, so you see how I'm not, I don't really, the colors are so smooth and luscious. Like I'm not even having, I don't even have to, you know, actually mix a lot of water right into my palette. I'm just really dipping the tip of my brush down in here and then letting it um, just kind of run. I'm just putting a little more water there because I want to get that a little more runny. <clears throat> okay, that blue is really. Ah, okay, so let's keep going. I want to get to the pen. So I've tried the indigo. This one right here was violet. I think that was the. No, that's the gray. This is the violet tulip. This is the gray. I'm going to see how. Oh, Robin, I can't get my, my water down there. So I really like to get a puddle of water so that it'll really. Start moving. It's gonna start putting that color in there, you know. You know what I'm saying. I really like to get that real runny effect. This, this is beautiful. And I really, I try to pull. It's a, it, the colors are so diverse. I, I found that even with the acrylics with Arteza, their colors are so diverse. There's such a good palette range that when you go to um let me see this was the indigo i think i'll use a little bit more of this other blue which what is this this is a stone so i'm going to kind of get i kind of will come back with the ones that I print on, get some water and just kind of extend that circle a bit. Let's get some indigo in there. Some color mixing. It's gorgeous. Um, so I was able to go through some blues and some purples and some grays and you see how well they still are, are working together there. Love that. Basically, when I'm doing this technique, I'm just taking my page and filling it up because I start with a large page like this. And those of you who are on Patreon with me, you know how I do this. I create large pages and then I, I will <clears throat> cut this up and work it back down into a smaller, um, a little bit of this blue in here, work it back into a smaller pages. And that way you get this overall pattern that really stays random um, and really looks good. So let's try the black. This, I'm going to put the black. So let's just go over here and let's, go, let's try to make a super intense black circle here. Oh boy. Oh my God. This is so good. Look at that. 
between my favorite little brush here and these paints. This is easy. This is really easy. So let's just get a few more. Get some more water. I kind of have a tendency to stick with whatever, you know, I may be having a certain um, shapes that I'm working with in a palette. So let, now that I've kind of got an over, you know, arrangement of various circles and triangles, let's go ahead and do some scripting. And so what I do is I do the scripting, get that water in there, and then I kind of will just kind of work it back in. I like to get it very watery so that it will um, and then I'll take a I'll do a large movement with the water I'll come back with some indigo here and so kind of go from that black to the indigo you know using my scripting which I love See how this page is, look how beautifully it's coming together. What we're missing right now, of course, is the, the metallic, but wow, this is good. I'm really loving that color of blue too. So I'm happy that, that the palette is so, so diverse that I can, so this is, it's a little bit of blue on my brush. Let me get this off, I'm using this taupe. I can sort of get this sort of background imagery because what I oftentimes will do is I'll use a lighter color like like we're doing here also I have a tendency to turn my page a bit when I'm scripting because you know here again remember I'm gonna be cutting this up and I like things that go in various directions oh my goodness I'm loving this let's get this I already have the stroke down there I can come back and really get that running mm. like that too that's looking good so let's go this way just kind of do a big swish over and then I go back and get the black and then we can just really I'm just kind of going back over the lines that I made with the scripting and then it's going to run. So you get all that really nice running here. Pulling. Oh, that's gorgeous. Look how that's starting to pull there. Oh, I'm loving it. Oh, I love that line. Alrighty, so let's see where we are time-wise. We're looking good. So let me get some more. I'm gonna use this this blue here. The um, stone blue was. Let's do some scripting with it. And I just start kind of going over my patterns, <coughs> pattern over. Um, you know, uh, um, symbols. <laughs> just kind of keep on scripting over it. So this is how I use my watercolors on handmade paper. <clears throat> And you know, uh, you, I come back and we can actually do more. So let's use the jelly plate 
um, like a big stencil with the watercolor. So which color do I want to go in here with? Let's choose indigo. Here again, just building it up on the plate. We can stamp back over, see the quality, so we get a whole different kind of circle. Get more of a, 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 um, a uh, what do you call it, like an ink blot. Love that. So let's do that again. There we go. So you see, we can just kind of go back, I go back and forth between using my plate as a stamp, um, working with, let's work with this one right here. Um, this right here. Use a little bit of black to kind of create like an outline around the circle that, that I had, you know, stamped. <clears throat> so that's nice. It kind of fills it out. And then when I go back with my metallics on top, it just really adds, adds to it. Indigo now. I like going from the black to the indigo as I'm scripting. Okay. okay, so really liking how these blues and the blacks and the indigos are working over top of this coffee staining and you see as it dries we just get more of that watercolor pooling and it just fans out and just this is really taken beautifully to the papers so now you know I could go on and on with that one but let's get the pen so we used if you remember we used this um, wine um, to make a few circles so let's go back Let's go back in here now and just do some, some scripting. I'm kind of going to hug this, this image right here and script. And you see how beautiful the pens are working. It's just like, um, it's very easy. I mean, I'm very light touch. a really light touch here. The only reason why I had dipped them in water in the beginning, if you recall, was because I wanted a little bit more water on the plate. I could have taken my brush and put some on and then just done this, but I find if I just dip it in there a little bit, it works beautifully. And then finish this little, little one up into a book so um, you guys will see it finished so right here is this is the denim blue This blue is really drying, really pretty into that paper, that indigo that I did as a um, jelly print. This is the denim blue in the pen. And I just like to kind of go over 
over things that I've already done. If I'm scripting, it just builds up a lot of layers. <clears throat> and also I pulled this one. They have some of the best names. Well, I did pull the black. Um, let's just see. <clears throat> These, you know, of course, the, the, the brush pens, using them like this for my scripting, we're going to get like a brush line. We're here, we're getting a watercolor line that's bleeding. So you can see the difference between those two. But that's what, that's what makes this really work well. It's just to have a, um, you can see like here I have the, um, that taupe. So then I'm taking the black and working over the taupe. Um, so then I get this sort of layer on layer going, which I love. And good, I'm just kind of looking at the different areas. Okay, so then the last one I was going to show you for this particular palette, and like I said, I'll be using these a lot more, so we'll be playing more with these. This is the Elephant Gray. I wanted to see how this. like a it's almost like a Payne's gray a little like a little lighter um, in a brush pen and I really just like to go and brush over the images just so I can get these great layers I haven't noticed, um, I, I, I'm pretty sure that I looked at their website really well. I didn't um, see the metallics in the tubes. I don't think I overlooked them. So I could stand to be corrected there. I'm almost certain that I didn't see the Arteza metallics in the watercolor. So, but I do use, um, I do have a few brands that I love. So I'll be showing you guys those as well on this page because I'm going to finish this into a little book structure. Sometimes if, it, if, the brush, if I feel the brush gets a little dry, I'll just dip it in water and then kind of go again and we'll start. Ah. So there we have it. Now, this is where these pieces were. Like the paper that I did these on, it was like, four times the size of this. It was a pretty big piece. I think it was like 24 by 22 or something like that. So then I took it and you can see where I've torn the edges down, you know. So, and that's why some of the images are stopping in the middle. So that's the same thing I would do with this one. I'm gonna tear it, I'm gonna actually rip this down into a smaller book. I may just do an accordion structure when I play with that. Um, to come up with something else but anyway so this is going to get smaller i'm also going to end up doing the back side i got to do the back side but i do that once this dries so pretty much these are the techniques that i use when i'm watercoloring with um, using watercolors on um a really nice paper using my jelly print and using you know using the jelly plate or printing right on top or painting right on top sorry Like, look at it. It's not, these are not even dried yet, but you can see the quality. It's how it's bleeding there. It looks so pretty. Oh, I love it. Over here, look at this blue one. So you can see the difference between the jelly printed version using the pens and then that blue, and then using the, the, the wine um, red pen around the outside. And then this one right here is the elephant gray so they all just really look really gorgeous just want to show you various sections of it close up so you can appreciate this right here is the circle that we did on the plate using this one right here using um, the paint and just you know drawing on the circle and sort of doing an ink blot kind of print and we did that over top of some of the other ones 
Do you see this one down here? No, I'm just going to take the comb off. Look at that line. Ugh. So anyhow, that is how I would use, how, how I have been using watercolors in my work. I'm loving the Artezas. I have, I can have so much fun with this palette. I just can't wait to just get really dig into and keep on using these. I'm really loving it. So this is just one of, this is how I work with watercolors. It's just my, you know, fun way of, of, of working with them. And then when, when I'm done, you can, we could leave it like this, or we could actually use a jelly plate and just do a real thin layer of glaze and glaze and lock all of these, um, this watercolor into the paper so that it won't bleed over time. And I will um, show you guys that when um, I actually push, you know, work this down into the smaller book structure. So you guys will see the finished um, bit of this. Any questions that you have, please put them below the video. Um, I'll have the link for these Arteza products that I'm using um, below the video. And if you go through that link, they normally always give a discount amount um, to my um, subscribers. So that link will take you through and you'll get whatever discount, or if it's a better discount on the site, you can get that one as well. And um, I think that's everything. All right, thank you guys, take care. And as always, appreciate all the support over here. If you like this video, please like and subscribe if you're not already a, um, a subscriber over here and love you guys so much so I'm back with our finished little book that I created from the large Arteza watercolor paper that we were just working on um, I always take photocopies of my um, prints before I work them down into a journal because you know I can use these in other projects you know we're working on our jelly decks wouldn't this be wonderful to add to that structure because for me the jelly decks also is like a journaling aspect where things that I'm doing in my studio ideas projects that I'm working on it bits and pieces get worked back into that structure and it's a good way of kind of documenting the work that you're doing over the course of so many months or whatever so so we started with our large this is um, photocopied in various sections but remember our piece was was a was it a 12 by 14 I believe it was let's just take a quick look here yep it's 11 by 14 so we started off with an 11 by 14 piece of the Arteza mixed media we did all of the watercoloring using the watercolor and the oh my goodness the jelly printing with it using these these great pins I think my favorite color and I'm not really a blue person, but this stone blue really got my heart beating. I love it. Um, I just think it's such a beautiful color, especially in my color palette of so many neutrals and um, rusts and golds and blacks, the creamy tones. So this is the book that I created. Um, I did a video of this, but I always do a lot of my book structures and stuff over on Patreon, so I show... Um, a lot of behind the scenes when I'm working on projects, but we do a lot of book structures over there. So that book that we, um, the paper that we just did, I worked it back into sort of an accordion folded structure. This is a piece of vintage um, sequin, is a sequin dress. And I got it when I was in LA at one of the vintage stores and I, I probably paid way too much for something that I had already had intentions on cutting up. <laughs> but I love the color, I really, don't find these sort of neutral, taupey, goldy kind of colors in the, um, you can see it in vintage things. So I had that, and then I had some of this ribbon right here is old ribbon as well. Um, when I lived on the East Coast, I used to go to the factories in Philadelphia. They had so many textile factories and warehouses, and it would just be like tons of old stuff there, like from the 30s and the 40s and what have you. And I got this, so I've had this for a while, but it's a beautiful sort of celadon velvet that really works well in with this color palette. So what I did for the book is I wrapped it, This so this piece, you know, was wrapped around. I tucked the, the, the inside back like an envelope fold and then sewed my, so this, you know, I sewed the ribbon on and so this opens up across the front and here's our book 
so this page open so we can open it sort of like a two-fold at a time like this and I split the pages so you know we get you get the full print but gives it some um, interest and then I used wax linen thread to sew um, to um, bind it and then we're here at the back and so then we can flip it this way this is the stone blue I think that is the best color and is our, is our flip oh, I love this little book and then we can also just open it like this you know and have it the full so this is like a modified accordion structure so then we it reads all the way across front and back so that's that's the book structure that I created from that one so you know you can really take a large sheet like that's 11 by 14 and you can jelly print the whole thing and I know when I was doing it it was looking probably pretty busy but I know that when I cut it down into single pages I just get these snippets of design that work really well for me I love these kind of organic little books so you can just work your large piece front and back just have a lot of fun just wild abandon and then when you cut it down you get some of the best surprises and this just wraps around like this and uh, wraps around them kind of tucks in here so kind of tuck it like this and there we have a little book structure so I just wanted to show you the finished product of working with one large sheet of paper and how you can just work it down into a really fun and easy structure so again thanks a lot for joining me here on YouTube and um, we'll be back next video to our jelly decks and I may be using some of these images in my jelly decks why not right um, they're there and ready to go. So until then, take care, have fun, happy creating in your studios. Any questions you have, please continue to ask questions, comment. I love that. If you're not a subscriber, please do. Thumbs up the video if you loved it. And yeah, and if you want to join me on Patreon, where we do a lot of book structures and all other kind of projects that I'm working on, um, it's just $10 a month. Then there's many eight videos that go up monthly and there's already over 330 something videos already uploaded so you get all of that when you join so it's quite a bit over there and it's a lot of fun so take care and until next time see you guys bye bye